So in our last video we configured Nginx to sit on port 80 of our web server and to proxy all the connections from port 80 to port 8080 where our Node.js application sits. And it is beautiful because now I don't have to put colon and any kind of port numbers here. I can just type nanogram IO and I end up on my application. It is great. However, there is one thing. Let me refresh the page. We broke somehow WebSocket connection. See this error here? WebSockets connection are still working on port port 8080. And this way we can diagnose pretty well that the reason is somewhere in Nginx, somewhere in our configuration, something is wrong that stops WebSockets from working properly. To understand why this happens, we need to dive a little bit deeper into HTTP protocol and to understand how WebSocket handshake is working. There are two types of headers in HTTP. One is end-to-end -end headers. These are the most common headers that you see. And the second one is hop-by-hop -hop headers. So what is hop-by-hop -hop header? Hop-by-hop -hop header is a header that is transferred between the intermediate points. As your request goes through the proxy servers, hop-by-hop -hop headers are not automatically being transferred from one proxy to the other proxy. And WebSocket is a hop-by-hop -hop protocol and it relies on hop-by-hop -hop headers to work. And it turns out that two most important headers, which is connection and upgrade, are just being lost by Nginx. Nginx naturally does not transfer it forward because it doesn't have to. So in order to fix our configuration, we need to make sure that these headers are taken care of for socket IO connection. Let's go back to our server and do it. So I'm back on our server and I'm back as root again because we will need to edit nginx configs. So let's do that. Our nginx configs are in Etsy, nginx and you remember inside of confd we created our nanogram IO dot conf, the separate file for just this host, and here how it looks like. Now let's talk a little bit about this location part. We talked already about the servers. This is how Nginx will decide which configuration block to use depending on which site you are trying to access. So for Nanogram IO it's using this server. Now the next level of configuration goes into location and each location block is well responsible for the part of the request after you uh, enter the host name. So for different locations you can do different things from Nginx. For example for the forward slash location, which is everything, we just do proxy pass. We just pass it to Node.js to handle the request. Now we will need another location and that location will be socket IO forward slash socket IO forward slash. This is where socket IO will be handling its requests. The logic inside of this curly braces will only be invoked when your browser is trying to access something that starts with socket IO forward slash. So what we want to do here, the first thing we'll need to do is to copy proxy pass. So whenever this location is matched, no other location blocks will be automatically invoked. So we will need to take this line from location block and copy it to our socket IO location block. And let's do it. So now don't forget to put here socket IO because we're not proxy passing to the root. From socket IO, we're passing to socket IO. So this will be the right way to do that. And now we need to take care of headers. We need two headers, connection and upgrade. And there is a command here, proxy set header that will do that exactly for us. The first header that we'll need is called upgrade and we'll set it to the value of whatever is being passed to us as upgrade. HTTP upgrade. This is, by the way, Nginx syntax to access any incoming header. So HTTP underscore header name will give you the value of that header. And the second header that we will need is connection. Proxy set header again and connection will have a value of upgrade, no matter what we really received. One more thing that we will need to do is to explicitly set HTTP version on our proxy. And we do that with the help of command proxy, HTTP version 1.1, not 1.0. So this will be a minimal sufficient configuration. This should be minimal sufficient configuration to have socket IO requests properly passed because this headers will be restored, upgrade header and connection header will be restored back and sent 
to the right place in socket IO. Now let's see if this configuration works. We are root and let's run nginx minus t to test the configuration. It looks like the syntax is okay. So now we are ready to restart nginx. nginx, not, not nginx. System CTL restart nginx. Remember, we are using systemd to manage nginx, so we access nginx comments via systemctl. Restart, start, stop, all those things go from systemctl. Okay, let's restart it. And uh, it's taking a bit of time to restart this time. Now it's done. Let's see if everything is good with our nginx. Status of nginx. And it's active, running. Now let's see if our website, how, how is our website doing? Okay, let's refresh it. And see, there is no more error. No error is not showing up anymore. And if you go to network, just to double to triple check that everything is fine. See XHR, XML HTTP requests are not being sent. There were a couple of them. But now we switch to WebSockets and WebSocket connection is established and it's working. So if you go to WebSocket section in your dev tools, and you go to this connection, you will see that there is data exchange. So the frames are being sent and received from WebSocket part. Amazing. So we fixed it. Now our WebSocket connection works properly. And uh, now we don't need to run our Node.js on the public port anymore. So what I will do here is I will again become my user that runs the application sudo. So Yuri, PM to stop. Ah, stop all obviously. I'll stop all the running applications. Now we'll see how our website looks afterwards. Well, this error page is not the best one. I think we should take a little bit of time and design this one properly in a little bit nicer way. But well, it will do for now. So now let's go back to our application code. And it's in home folder, easy IO. And let's add it main GS. And remember, in order to make this application available only to on the loopback interface, what we need to do, we need to pass here the name of the interface that we want to bind to, I want to bind to 127.0.0.1. So now this app will not be accessible from outside. And now let's restart PM to start all. It's running again. And our app is available from internet on port 80. But on port 8080, nothing here because we're listening on the different interface and our node is sandboxed inside of our host. This was great job. Let's output back the configuration that we did last time. So that's how our config looks like. This were the most important parts. I realize that this config is getting slightly more complex with each video. So I will be posting the text version of the configuration and text instructions for the configuration that you can quickly check and recap or just copy paste to your own server and modify a couple of settings. Okay, thank you very much for watching and see you in the upcoming videos.